Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Everybody, and welcome in to the 136th episode of this here, the Penny Bloom podcast. Tis I, Colton Robertson, and I am joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? What is up? Um, been a minute. Glad to be back in the mic. Um, super fun one today. Loved it. Loved this. Um, I guess. Do the yeah, I'll introduce it. I'll introduce, introduce this it. topic here. We've got. We're talking terrifying tales. Uh, Lego Star Wars new special. And we're going to talk Galaxy of Sounds. And obviously, these were not incredibly pressing. There probably won't be a ton of discussion to be produced from it. So we're each gonna we're each gonna draft. At the very end of this year, we're going to do Star Wars draft number three. It's just going to be the two of us though. So we're going to each be building the starting five. We're going to be building a team of five characters and uh, our basis here. You know, Halloween, terrifying tales, costumes, costume design, character design. We're going to discuss it. Uh, and obviously these are a couple different things. You know, when it comes to humans, uh, Han Solo's costume, that's a certain thing. However, he's got various costumes. You know, various looks through, across various movies. And you got characters like Bosk, who has one costume and one look and is obviously not a person, is a is a puppet and is designed a certain way. So it's like, it's a, it's a different, it's a little, there, there's a couple different topics here. However, we're going to mesh them into one and we're going to draft a start in five. Uh, but first, let's discuss uh, Terrifying Tales uh, and then Galaxy of Sound. So... Kick off October, Star Wars, well, Lego Star Wars hit us with a uh, a fun little uh, Lego short, uh, 40, about 45 minutes, terrifying tales. And uh, I loved the holiday one for, for Christmas, the Life Day special. Mm. And uh, so I was just, I was like very, very excited for this. Uh, how'd you feel about it overall on like the, uh, the first watch? It kind of surprised me. Um... I don't know if my humor is really just 12 year old humor, but like this was kind of funny. You know, obviously there are like the cringy jokes that were meant for kids, but like there were parts that were like legitimately funny. Like, no, 100%. And like that's that, like, and Lego always brings that to the table uh, uh, to a certain degree, you know, and like, I mean, looking at like the Lego movie part one and two, those are like mm-hmm. genuinely good movies. And then the uh, L- Lego Batman movie, that's great. And then, I mean, Star Wars Lego shorts, you know, they've been really, really directed at kids uh, up until Mm -hmm. relatively recently where they've made them a little bit more palatable to a broader audience while still definitely marketing it there for the children. Uh, But there were a couple jokes here that I just thought were uh, genuinely funny. And it's always it's always Vader or Palpatine because they're not funny characters and therefore you are going to make a lot of funny fucking jokes with them. Mm-hmm. Full luck. and like the yeah the references oh that was that was such a cute one uh it, the, man it was i don't know it was just a super fun yeah just entertaining thing to watch you know it was just and we got we got stuff spanning uh spanning all trilogies in these terrifying tales which i loved you know the first one is based around the knights of ren and kylo and their retellings of stories we know but with like the through a telephone so it's like it's 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 been diluted a lot and uh mm-hmm. they get to fit a certain narrative uh but you see kylo so we got a sequel trilogy one and then we get uh darth the maul and grievous <laughs> man that, i don't know just just the uh success of luke just being the the wookie's paw was uh oh yeah hilarious I, that was like i just loved like just seeing like Oh yeah, that makes sense. That's how Luke destroyed the Death Star, you know, like 
He was actually yeah. in a TIE fighter doing the 180 freaking what it proton blast whatever he called it and, you know just yeah. whiffing into the well, and i like to think this is the closest we've ever gotten to a star wars what if where yeah, Darth mean, was... vader raises luke in the empire and uh or not raises luke but trains him in the dark side and stuff but uh <laughs> it was all it was all very funny and i loved the the dagobah training sequence where he's running with darth vader on his back but it's through the death star and they do the Princess Leia swing, and he kisses him on the cheek and says it's for Man, luck. It, it, yeah, that was uh, – it was cool, like, after watching the twins, uh, like, kind of, yeah. like, thinking about that story, like, recently, like, kind of that storyline of, oh, what if Leia and Luke were, you know, brought up this way? And then seeing it, like, in a completely funny, joking manner like here was and they even go as far as to show us uh, general kenobi piloting a t- uh, an x-wing in the uh in the fucking the death star. same exact like you can't do any more work down here pull up you know like the same lines like during the the mm-hmm. princess leia's piloting one trench they call yep trench run is that what they trench run yeah it's actually okay i don't know if they actually called it a trench but uh but yeah the trench run scene was basically like one for one uh, like with all the voice lines and stuff, which was cool. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just it was it was just super uh, fun to watch, and I think it's it's honestly just the content that I end up liking the most is the content that I have no expectations for, and then I just go in just wanting to enjoy. That's been what if. That's been this. That's been you know Galaxy of Sounds. Um, yeah, like it's just been all these kind of like one-off kind of shows where it's not super tied into canon. And even if it is, it's, you know, just kind of more of a lighthearted show. And mm-hmm. like, I don't know, this year Disney's been killing it with this content. Um, I'd argue, and... I, I'd argue it's the, it's definitely the best year ever. If you are a Marvel and Star Wars fan, at least it's up there. I mean, Marvel's given us three series, two movies star wars has given us a couple series uh it's 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 been a good one for for us fans and uh this this little uh lego special they're they're always fun and the premise that uh we are uh we're moving into castle vader and uh it's becoming a sith themed hotel built by a hut ran or not built by a hut ran by a hut which just of course uh it's just perfect, and then we got the uh, the appearance of a uh, uh, Vene. Yeah, what was his name? Uh, Vene, yeah. who yeah. is uh, Darth Vader's manservant. <laughs> oh man, this this character man didn't expect uh, didn't expect him to actually turn into what he turned into. Um, oh like yeah, like I, a mech, like a yeah, mech like ran a full like it was. I mean. It, Basically, like, it was basically, like, full Ultron, like, Star Wars version, though. He had a Mega Saber, you know, the best lightsaber that you could have. He had the Holocron, which is basically, like, a stone, you know. Like, I don't know, it's yeah. basically, like, you know, an Infinity Stone or Gauntlet version. Uh, and I love the simplicity of tying everything together. Like, he was telling all these stories to show you how he was building his plan. Yeah. The stories there. weren't for us. They were for him! You know, like... The real, like, yeah. yeah, just, I mean, it was, like, I expected it to be, like, a lot more childish. I don't know why. Like, every time I go into a Lego movie, I'm always, like, I'm expecting just a super childish, cringy movie. Or, like, cringy experience. But then I'm, like, been these storylines are actually kind trouble. of cool. Like, I'm, you know, like, I'm invested in these storylines. You know, like, I'm actually, like, I kind of want to see how these turn out. Like, this is a cool yeah. idea. Like, I don't know. It's just... Every time I go into something, like, just with the expectation of I'm just here to enjoy this, like, it always turns out great. And I, I'm not that, – that, that's just because everything that has been put out has been great also. Like, it's just – everything's been top tier, and this this is no exception, in my opinion. No, yeah, this is just as – this is a uh... – this is just fun, and that's ultimately what this is about, you know, in terms of Star Wars and Marvel. It's just that you're supposed to have fun, and uh, 
this and i mean the first night galaxies galaxy of sounds came out i just kicked back turned that on and i just watched it all through and i was like this is the shit because i remember a few months back they have a pixar version of it and i checked it out and i was literally thinking to myself they have got to do a star wars version of this and they finally done it and uh it's i i love it i think it's uh it's the perfect little background thing it's basically random noises as well as a montage of all the super important moments in Star Wars. Like, see, and that, that was the, that was the other compelling part was that like for, for the first couple, it's like, or the first one, it's like, ah, here's all these beautiful sceneries. And like, I just love that. It's like the actual sound from Mm -hmm. the movie with no voice lines, with no voice lines and no music. The only voice lines that there are are droid voice lines are other languages barely though i think there's only like there was only yeah, like there's, two the, there's the other the droid that pops out of the wall and is like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then uh yeah there was like t- like of actual words spoken like i don't was there any english spoken at all no no there's no i don't think there was there. one english yeah english word spoken but yeah it was it was just really cool like and even like kind of got me sort of emotional like watching some of the some of the scenes like with Leia um especially um in the later ones um like I definitely teared up with hers but then like just other like just um just big Star Wars moments and just hearing just the sound and like it, it was just like a different like I don't know experience like I've never paid attention to just the sound before. And now that I'm hearing like all these different, like the sound design yeah, is exquisite. It's so detailed. It's so much more detailed than you think. Like there's so many more sounds. They, that go they were so meticulous about it yeah. because none of them, none of them are just piped in. Like they had to create these. There's no, mm-hmm. there's nothing to base off of for a laser cannon firing. And there's, like these ships flying through the air, I'm sure there's obviously a a degree of recordings of actual jet propulsion and shit like that. But yeah. it's like, how did they make that Tie Fighter noise? The <laughs> just like that, actually. Wow, you did it perfectly, literally. Just yep. I didn't know you were the voice actor for the Tie Fighters, but wow, that's me. Actually, I've been uh, I've been been around since 1977. I, I if... am actually a vampire. <laughs> if if that noise from the movie came out of a human's mouth, that is impressive. If that actually came impressive. out of a human's mouth, I. Well, and one thing blown. that I, one thing I loved about this, uh, one of these, the dark side one, is that something that we've grown up with, and uh, just thought of as breathing. Like the iconicism of having designed the way. Darth Vader breathes. That sound could have been very different. Dude, they did not true. have to do the thing they did. But the reason, uh, part of the reason he's so iconic is because of what they did with his, with the way he breathes. How do you decide that? Like they had to sit down and like, think about like, should it be fast? Should it be <sighs> slow? And they're like, Oh, definitely slow. Or is it that fast of like a, you know, realization or do they like just do many different like tests? Like Like, there's just like, I guess they were just, it's a mechanical (laughs) breathing. There's so many different options you could have gone with for that. They just had to be like, wow, that's, that's so insane. Just thinking how much actually goes into making a movie. Like, and, and then and how much just goes into in 1977 making Star Wars. Yeah. It's like you think of how much goes into a movie and you're like, okay, there's filming, there's production, there's costume, there's sound, there's everything. But then like you go into just sound and then you're like, yeah, but then in sound, there's the concept design from the sound from the start. You know, you got to think of what the sound even sounds like. And then you have to actually put it into character and then the script and then line it up with the, the visual, you know, you know, and it's just like, Everything's connected. That's why whenever you actually sit down and watch credits, they are 15 minutes long because thousands or or hundreds of people had to work on this movie. It's – yeah, that's – film is just insane. 
like VFX, that's probably where the most, I would say the most people, well, that's a good question. What do you think the biggest section of credits in movies are today? You know what? There's probably, it, it probably is in VFX. Uh, just because I'd imagine it's like, it's obviously not one person working on VFX. If you're, you're doing a whole movie. You got to have options. You got to have every single ver- every single option had to have had its early stages. It's like it's post production stages, and then it's full blown stage. And if you didn't end up going with it, you didn't end up fucking going with it. And it's like, like it, it, there's just so much work for so many people. Uh, but yeah, it got me thinking. Like, gosh, what are some of my like just favorite Star Wars sounds? Mm. Uh. Mm-hmm. And obviously, obviously, Boba Fett's seismic charge is pretty much unmatched in terms of uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> the ah, uh, just the, and in this, we got the pure sound bite. No, sh- like the ship. No was music. Kind of- yeah, and like an Obi Wan ship was kind of tuned out too, and like all the rock explosions were kind of more tuned out. So it was, well, I mean, you heard them, but like this was the this they gave it to us. Like that, this was like them just being like You're they did it back to back. They were Here's, like, you yeah. knew it was oh, coming. Yeah, and it's like so it's the crispest audio, and you have the 4K footage too. You know, the ultra, you have everything at the max it could possibly be. And you just hear just the most beautiful sound. You just they know what they're doing. They had the samurai blade sound come out and then they released this. Come on. I mean, like they know what they're doing. They know how iconic Star Wars is. Man, like Yeah, they know they know what parts are they know what's loved. They know for sure. And how uh, many times have you heard the the uh, the samurai unsheathing lightsabers sound on TikTok, like it's been probably fifty percent of mine. I just hear that over and over and over. You know, with the uh, with uh, Lil Nas in the background too. Um, mm. It's like you know, with the music too. It's like there's that version, and then there's just like the Disney Plus, you know, audio. But but man, I've been hearing that a lot and. I'm I'm still not tired of it. I don't think I ever will. That's no, number two. I don't think I ever will be either. It's number it's, two. Uh, though. It doesn't beat the uh, seismic charge, in my opinion. It, it it the seismic charge, just how iconic it is, and whenever you hear the noises, just play them. You get more of a physical sensation out of a seismic charge. Yeah, and, if, it, you feel and it. if you don't understand what I'm saying, go do it, and you'll understand. The size. You know what my number two what? might be? Hmm. Oh, it's. Wait, what's your number one? Is it si- the size? My number charge? one seismic charge. Okay, okay, I think. Okay, cool. My number two though might be the noise that the giant animal makes that Obi-Wan rides in Revenge of the Sith while he's chasing General Grievous. I love that. I love that. That's a good one. And when that came on, I'm not going to lie. I was like, I underappreciated that sound. Like, No, that's what this makes everything stand out is like, holy shit. There are some sounds in this that I never really took the time to go, that sound was dope. I, did a human do that, you think? <laughs> wow. Man, I really want to know the percentage of sounds in Star Wars that came out of a human's mouth versus not. Yeah. It's got to be low. It's got to be low. There's just so many sounds in this, like, in this universe that just can't be made with a mouth. In my opinion, no, yeah, like it's it's so interesting thinking about how they had to have they had to have augmented sounds that they've taken from things that already existed, also. And I'm assuming as technology has developed, there's more of an ability to 
create a sound from nothing That's true. through tuning and stuff. True. I'm trying to think of some more though. I, you know, I love the, like we said earlier, the Tie Fighter. That sounds pretty iconic. The <gasps> light. I mean, it, it, how are you not going to? The the basis. Okay, wait. Were prequel Tie Fighters louder, or were original Tie Fighters louder? I think the original Tie Fighters are the loudest and most violent. I think. Yeah. I think it goes original trilogy. They're like it sounds like a person scream like it kind of does sound like a human in the original trilogy screaming like dying like it sounds like a screech in the original yeah. trilogy prequels it's loud but it's not what it was but then the sequels it's kind of more futuristic sounding they they kind of chose the more smooth sailing it was still loud but it's not screech no i get you i you get know what you I mean? for like, sure so they they toned it down, and they I went think. back to that fucking <laughs> <laughs> for the for the sequels and Mandalorian. Like they they went all in on that shit for the sequels and Mandalorian. Oh man, I I love the just like I think there's a shot of like you hear a like it's a mountain and it's like quiet, and then you see the Tie Fighter come above the mountain, mm. like it's quiet, and then you just. It, it's just out of note. Just oh man, that noise. It's just there's actually a moment like that in the Rise of Skywalker when Kylo's Tie Fighter itself comes around it, the mountain. I think that's what it is. I think and that's like the there's moment. no music playing in that moment in the movie either. I, I don't think, think that's. I think it oh, is. Just... No, that's right. That's what it is. The prequels Tie Fighters are quiet. Those are the quiet ones. The original and sequel are the loud. Yeah. Tie Fighters. That's right. They really let them roar. In the in the sequels, in in this, just hearing like just the Tie Fighter and the get like the sound thing, man, I oh, yeah. that's a. And they were doing the whole. I'm watching the lightsaber sequence right now while as we talk about it here, mm. and uh, watching these back to back to back where they start with Luke and the Mandalorian, and then they go to Vader and Rogue One. And then immediately after that, they go to Anakin versus Obi-Wan in that hallway in Revenge of the Sith. And every time I see that shot, I always think this is the most underrated hallway shot in all of Star Wars. So I was so glad to see it put right next to those because I was like, it's perfect. It fits right there. Obviously, it's not one person going full boss mode. But like it's the it's one of the most beautiful shots in Revenge of the Sith for my money, and that's all, another thing that I love about this is like, obviously the movies are already a uh, ode to the visual artists of Star Wars, but and so is the sound design. But getting this and like they're they're like special thanks to our uh, sound and visual departments. Like that that's that's the point of this is for mm-hmm. you to appreciate some of the most beautiful shots across the movies with the most beautiful sound in all of it, mm. and. uh it's it's fucking perfect. Another one of my favorites that they it's just really like it's kind of dull. It's not like uh it's not real in your face. It's in Rogue One. It's the Death Star coming over the horizon. Mm. The rumble. The mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I love it. Uh-huh. That that one that one was cool. The ro- like I for uh for a lot of it i was playing this mind game and i was trying to see how instantly i could say the movie that these were coming from i i was too um in rogue one like every time i said rogue one i'm like ooh that's a good sound ooh that's a good sound like every rogue one rogue was like, one's rogue like one, that's a good sound and it's and, also arguably the prettiest like oh. it is so good looking mm. of a, such a well shot movie but yeah, that the Death Star, like the I that was from, was it? I think it was the Rogue One, hum. Yeah, it was the Death. It, it was in Rogue One. Yeah, and it, oh, that it was yeah, it that going was, over Jeddah. I think. Mm, mm, mm. I my favorite. There's it's two. I can't decide between these two. It was the transition between Han from, uh like young Han to old or old Han to young Han, like in the, in the Falcon. And like, it was a clean transition 
or mm-hmm. the Luke transition. It went from young Luke to old Luke or old Luke to young Luke or something like that. And it was like, yeah, yeah. Like they had, uh, you know, that those transitions, I, uh, those were like my, I, if I had to pick out like my favorite moments, uh, like visually, those would definitely be it. But I also love that they dedicated a whole episode to droids mm, and the sounds they make. That one was, it was, oh my God. That's another a thing that uh, in terrifying story tales, terrifying tales, um, they they made like BB-8. Like, did you see how he was like murking people? Like he was going all like what? Oh my god! How am I like blanking on the scene? I remember like watching it and being like, dude, BB-8's got to have like a a good kill count too. By the way, he's just like jumping on these people <laughs> like uh, on these droids like oh yeah it was it was uh the like the droid the zombie droids or whatever yeah and yeah, like yeah. someone was in like a, a situation where they thought they were like gonna die or something and then bba just rolls in and literally just claps all of them and like jumps on them and just squishes them and like it got me just thinking about like droid kill counts again and like just r2 chopper and bb8 man like they gotta be like at the top of the droid, like a list, like you know, like they're up there. Is there okay? I guess C three PO is probably up there, but he's probably like hated amongst the droids because he's like annoying. Well, three PO probably doesn't. Let's be real, three PO doesn't really have a kill count. That's true. Okay, yeah, I'm not saying like what I'm talking about now is just like. Oh, their general who's perception amongst just, droids. Yeah, who's like the most popular droids? I'd, like, I'd be willing to bet that 3PO is kind of just like a famous person's best friend that nobody really knows. <laughs> that's a that's a good analogy. 3PO is just the, the A-lister's best friend. <laughs> He's like the third Manning brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. The third Manny brother. I don't even know his first name. I couldn't tell you. Alan. I'm going to guess. Alan I Manny. I reason want to say, like, Anthony, but I know that's not right. The third Manning brother. Cooper. Cooper. Not even close for either of us. Cooper. He's 6'4". He, had, he had it, you know, if he wanted Nah, he already won. He's six four. He's fine. That's true. Uh, I got into sports <laughs> anyways. He hosted Fox Sports, so look at him. Oh, he, good for him. Good for him. Good guy. Uh, one last sound I want to mention before we jump into our little one v one draft is obviously the uh, the Darth Vader helmet going on for the first time. The the high pitch hum. <laughs> That shit is fantastic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. That's a that's another a ooh. That might be number 2. It's up there. That might be number 2. Seismic charge, it still don't be seismic charge. I'm sorry. Seismic charge sends a sensation through your body every time you hear it. Literally. Like pretty much. I'm also not going to cap. In the movie theater, the first time I heard like, because they made a moment of it in The Rise of Skywalker. Palpatine's lightning at the end. That, that, that it went silent and it was like, like the, the, the pure thunder that was coming out of him. Uh, fantastic. I, lo- I also love that sound. That is, I also agree. That, what a, what a, like, with force lightning, would it? Wouldn't you all go deaf? Everybody around you. In theory, in theory, yes. Can you imagine that much lightning going off that close? <laughs> How loud that must be! Because in order for lightning to be lightning, it has to break the sound barrier because it's light and it moves faster. It moves fast. That would, yeah, that's, 
force a uh, ear protection probably is what they end up doing. But feel feel Hopefully. bad for all the non force users out there that are close to that that force lightning. Yeah, everyone that was up in Palpatine's freaking ears. show, deaf now. Well, also dead, but true. They're all dead. Died deaf. <laughs> That's why they're like, you heard all that. Ah, that was actually all of them like in unison going, huh? <laughs> I guess Palpatine might be smart enough to put something in their helmets or something. That, uh, potentially, cancels. potentially. How but, uh, about how about we wrap this this here little combo up on Galaxy of Sounds and uh, uh, terrifying tales with uh, a, a little bit of a last thoughts? You know how how yeah. how to go? Yeah, you know it's just great, timeless content. This can just be something that you can come back to at any point and just enjoy. Uh, like doing home, I might just put on like Galaxy of Sounds when I'm like doing homework or like stuff now, like instead of like using sometimes. I put it on to go to bed two nights in a row. Like it's, it's very soothing. It's very just relaxing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, uh, I love that Disney plus is just kind of giving us, throwing Mm -hmm. us anything because they know we'll accept it. And it's, I mean, they have really good ideas. All of these vehicle fly throughs, biomes, all of these are just Super good. They're, we're getting we're inching closer and closer to Star Wars Animal Planet. <laughs> we're getting get a Steve closer Irwin type and character. Closer. Get Obi Wan. Oh my god, if you get Ewan McGregor to be Steve Irwin, but Star Wars version, it literally would sell it it would be the Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Everybody. Cut the check. Give Cut me money. The check. Give me money. Give me money. But yeah. Great content, love it. Uh, yeah, I can't get enough of it. It's just so, uh, it's it's light, it's fun, it's uh, it, and it's endlessly Star Wars, you know. And uh, to get so much new Star Wars stuff here in the span of a couple weeks with Visions, Galaxy of Sounds, uh, this Lego special, I always love that it comes in waves. It feels like mm. it feels like whenever it hits us, they really hit us, you know, for a second. And then they, they lay off the gas for a little bit, and then they're like, oh, here's another. Mm. Yeah, and this, but... was the, this was the little, we're going to hold you over until December Oh yeah, for the Book of Boba. For the actual good shit. The shit that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to die. That you're going to, wait, do they release seasons all at once? Or do they do weekly? For the Book of Boba? Yeah. I'm Did guessing it... that'll be weekly. Was Mandalorian weekly? I don't remember. Yeah. It was. Yeah. We watched it. We watched it every yeah, week. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Was it? Yeah, the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I know this for a fact. Yes, because yes. we did the we did the podcasts weekly. Yes, we wouldn't yes. have just. Yes. Yes, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. This has been very grateful. Yes. We've mentioned a lot of sleepers for this draft, and I've just been writing down. I don't know if you're hearing my pen click every now and then, but. Been oh, getting yeah, some been really good, like, some, kind of uh... sleeper, like, kind of characters that have been mentioned that have, like, I don't know, that have just been, been, uh, added, a nice addition to my, to my list, just in case you probably pick some of mine. I'm assuming that you're going to pick, so. I haven't put a ton of thought into it, uh, okay. coming into this draft. I mean, yeah. I, I'm kind of going straight off the dome with it because I already, like, I, I am such a huge fan of this type of discussion and i love character design i love drawing so i Mm. love i know what i love to draw uh and that helps a lot so it's just like i'm coming at this maybe not i i might not come out of this with like the objectively better looking team but i know i'm gonna come out of it with a team that i love the look of you know what i'm saying Yeah, yeah totally fair before we do get into it i do just want to clarify one thing like would you consider like a Yoda and Grogu to be basically the same thing in this situation. Not necessarily, because I would ask that you went you you referenced a specific uh m- movie or uh, I mean, and then in, with Grogu, you can reference a specific show because he doesn't really change his yeah. outfit. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you just say Grogu, it's just pretty much Grogu. Yeah, and Grogu's character design is iconic in and of itself. True. So uh, it's, it's. But I just, I just could... wanted to see like how you, 
Like, because I mean, it, like I, I consider them different saying, because they're like, different characters. The design of the yeah. species, you know, like or of the characters. See, like if you wanted to go with like, there's these, uh, like uh, Greedo. Yeah, yeah. Like you were picking Greedo, you could also you could still pick another one of his species. You could pick another Rodian, but if you go with specifically Greedo, you go with I'm assuming Greedo and Star Wars: A New Hope. You know, obviously, you want your pick to not just be a random character of a species that you know. You want it to be the top dog, you know. Hopefully, so, so yeah. So okay, I mean, obviously, or, yeah, that... or I mean, or not a top dog. I mean, like but, uh, if there's a background character that's like extremely stood out that, to you, that's that true. you're just like that's true. I mean, yeah, go go for it. I, I think I got some some good ones here. Um, a lot of them don't really change much at all. Um, it's just their pure design is good enough just to carry. Just yeah. they don't need change. Uh, but I'm I'm ready. I think. All right, then. Uh, you want to you want to do the paper rock scissors as is tradition here for the uh for the and this won't be snake. We won't do snake yeah, just, just because it is too. We'll just go back forth, back forth, back forth. Uh. And uh, you know when we when, when you when you pick your when you take your pick, try your best to describe the outfit. And uh, if you're listening to this, I want you to know that there are pictures available of these specific outfits on Twitter. By the time you're listening to this, uh, so you can reference what we are speaking about as we are speaking about it. If you are not driving a car, say you pick. Hmm. Oh, I don't. Do I want to give this away? Hmm. Let's Say, do paper, rock, scissors first, and then you can ask. Fair. Fair. All right. How, okay, how do we want to do this since it's, like, over the internet? We uh, Paper, rock, scissors, shoot. And uh, we've done this before. So, I it mean, it like, worked. We, uh, it worked fluently. It worked, it okay. worked every time pretty okay. seamlessly. Okay. okay. So, uh, we'll do best two out of three. You cool with that? Cool with that. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right, you got me there. Cool. You got me there. Cool, cool. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah, got me again. Okay, so, Joe, you will go first. I will go second. So, now you can ask your question and... Well, I don't know if I want to pick this person first as (laughs) well. So, it's like, I don't know. Maybe, well, I don't... Okay. Is there any character that you can relate to it that is kind of like a... Maybe I'll just say in general. I'll just speak in generality. Say this character has a lot of different cost, like a lot of different. You, costume then you designs. you pick one specific cost, and, and then all the rest of them are up for grabs. So it's not like you pick yes. this character and then all the rest are gone. No. So it's okay. you, like for example, Padme Amidala appears in so many things and so many gorgeous okay. outfits. She will certainly, I'm I'm assuming, will be taken more than once here. Is this uh, is this costume and character design? So like yes, so like uh, it it wouldn't just be like for humans, it's more the costume is what it's about. Gotcha. And then for beyond the humans, uh, I mean, if you have like say Darth Maul, he appears in a couple different ways: the spider legs, the robotic legs, his human legs. Like, take your pick of those. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit. I for some reason didn't think I'd have the first pick, so I didn't really think of who I would choose first. (laughs) <laughs> and, like, there's two trains of thought that I'm kind of going with right now. There are characters that are just iconic. Like, their costume design is iconic, and that is the reason for that character being iconic. The character that jumps out immediately to me is Vader. Vader. Um, yes. Like, that's just my immediate thought. But, like, his costume is iconic, Yes. And he is, you immediately know that dude is evil. There's no way that dude's good. You know his intentions. Like, his character, cost, everything is perfect. But, like, I think I'm just thinking about it too hard. I think he just is the number one pick. I, I Yeah. I, I'm, I don't really think. I, I think I'm overthinking it. I think I'm just going to lock in Vader. And I think that is the correct <laughs> choice uh yeah. vader and like you said all the reasons he is the most icon he has one look that is his look 
And uh, boy, oh fucking boy, is it a good one. It yeah, I didn't even have to say a costume of Vader. I guess I'll take full Vader. Um, whenever full he has Vader. all limbs, no damage done to him. That that suit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all robotic limbs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Not yeah. not the chopped up version. Not him on fire. Not him in ashes. Not him when gotcha. his helmet is like in Kylo's possession. Yeah. The Vader we all know and love. All right, I'm 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 down with that. I'm down with that. That's that's the correct first pick. And you know, playing on that, the the second obvious choice for me is actually Darth Maul. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of like, you look at that guy, you know exactly what he's about. It's the most clear character design of all time. For me now, it's a choice of which Maul I want. Uh, Maul was the first name that I wrote down. Because yeah. he's my favorite character design. Yeah. Like, but I think Vader just ups. If if it was like my favorite, like top five, I'd pick Maul first for sure. Um, I'm interested Maul's, to see Maul's which definitely Maul you up pick there. there. This is int- this is an interesting choice on which one to pick. I go Clone Wars introduction Maul Spider Leg Maul. It's the only way. It's the only way to go here. It's the best because... of both worlds. It is. You get the crazy ass Maul and his crazy, his absolute craziest horns uh, run fucking amok. He's literally got spider legs made of garbage. It's it's impeccable. It's the epitome of what Darth Maul is. I mean, come or, on. Or, or who Maul was. Yeah, that. And uh, therefore, he is the number one pick for me. That is uh, what would have been my second pick. If uh, int- Interesting question. Would you have picked Vader if you had the first pick, or would Definitely. you? Okay, interesting. Um, All right, I'm putting my I'm putting my picks I'm putting my picks in the chat just to remember them. Okay, my phone's about to die. Um, interesting. Now, okay, this is interesting. I don't know. I don't think you'll pick him. I guess I just gave you the gender, but um, there's plenty of guy characters. Yeah, out there. I don't think you'll pick them either. Okay, this one, I think she deserves way more respect as a character. Um, her character design is awesome, and I want more screen time of her. I wish we got more. Um, this is Maz Kanata. Um, okay, I, I love that. I I can't think of another Star Wars character that, like, the first time that they were on screen, like, that just I immediately knew... Oh, okay. This is a character that, like, is important to the story. They know a lot of shit. Like, this, I don't know. And, like, they, they just look wise. This, like... I always love talking to you about this, Joe, because if there's anything, anyone who's ever listened to all the one-on-one stuff between me and Joseph on this podcast knows, it's that we fucks with Maz Kanata. We, be, we spend time talking about Maz Kanata. We have in the past anyway, and I can't agree with you more in terms of uh, showing us putting on screen someone who's clearly wizened and uh, just certainly of importance. Uh, She is perfect, and she presents this uh, in the sequel trilogy. I've always equated her to Yoda, like Mm -hmm. in terms of what she's supposed to bring to the table in most regards. She's like she's like a sweet old grandma, you know, like talking, you know, just whenever like you first meet her. But then like she's a ninja crime fight boba fett basically a basically a boba fett like i mean she's bad ass like just oh sorry talk later see you later i'm in the middle of this epic gunfight you know like i'm kind of sad like that's all we got to see of her you know in in that movie like it was just like a quick little facetime chat or whatever but like man i love her character like uh, just like her glasses and her taking them off and you know getting close and looking up and and inspecting people um i just love her character i love the design it might okay obviously she might not be your first thought when you think of a number two pick in all of star wars but i think this is a very open-ended question like a very you know a very good question to ask that's going to get very different answers from from uh 
from oh, us. Oh, 100%. So and and is, here, yeah. I'll, I'll give you my next pick. And the reason behind this next pick is not because I think it is even I'm, – I'm picking Padme here. It's going to be a Padme outfit here. And by no means do I think this is necessarily the most – beautiful outfit Padme ever wore or that I think this is the uh the uh the perfect image of uh whose Padme character was or anything however when I think of Padme Amidala I think of how I first saw her in the Phantom Menace and I think of her in her orange uh and yellow uh dress that is when she's in disguise as a as one of her handmaidens it's my favorite Padme look uh I absolutely love it. Uh, and every time I think of Padme, it's the first one I go to because of just uh, the nostalgia that comes with that movie mm. and that specific look. Uh, there, are so, there are several in Revenge of the Sith, and I'm considering two Padmes in this in this five. But uh, this one is the one I'm taking for now just because I, lo- I love this. And this, the nostalgia that it brings, brings for me is just... Uh, Hitherto undreamt of. I'm glad Padme went uh, top two. Um, she deserves it. She deserves either a, a number one or two spot. Um, if it was like all together, if it was just you got the whole character, she wins. She's oh, one hundred percent. She's number one. If you get like her queen outfits and her Padme outfits, like as well, I almost like, took a. Oh, I almost me? took a queen. I almost like, took a queen outfit. Oh like, my it was like, even it was though, hard to resist. Even though one of her queen outfits, you can literally see an extension cord um, in the plug that like lights it up, which is really funny. Yeah. Um, but nah, funny. yeah, yeah, she, she wins. Um, this, uh, my next pick, um, this, this guy, I, I, I just have to pick him just because he deserves it. Um, and it's Cad Bane. Um, Cad Bane, dude, is just. I I literally like every time Cad Bane comes on screen, like everything about him, he has everything. He has you know his music is all westerny and all you know, you know just just his vibe. You know he his hat, his outfit, just. I mean, Cad Bane really doesn't change much. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't even know of another outfit that he has. This might just be another no, general. No, this is it. This yeah, this is, is it. just yeah. another general uh, Cad Bane. But, uh, but man, I just – you look at this guy and you're like you, – you get what he's about right away. You know, you, you look yeah. at him, you get what he's about right away. And uh, love every time he comes on screen. Uh, can't wait to get more. Uh, loved him in the Bad Batch. Uh, seeing like a, you know, fully refreshed version of him, which was really cool to see and – Man, I don't know. Maybe it's just like, and also just his species is cool too. Like the the design of of his like snake or yeah, yeah, whatever that species is. He's I kind of he fantastic. reminds me of uh, Randall off. Uh, oh yeah, from Monsters, Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Whatever like he is is kind of like what Cad Bane is, but more humanoid. Um, I get you. I get you blue. for sure. But man, yeah, the red eyes with the the deep blue, you know, just skin like that. Like, you know, this dude just, you don't want to mess with that guy. Like in his, he's basically no, Rick sure. Sanchez as well, which is just hilarious. Um, he's, I just, I don't know. I love the character. I, I think he deserves a, a top three for me. Um, I, I, and I think a lot of people are going to be like, really, this is the, the list that you're going with, like that, that's your top three. I like, love it though. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, my next one I think is a good one. However, like I think people are going to be like, wow, that's three. Uh, Supreme leader Snoke. That those, those gold satin robes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to tell okay. you. Okay. Okay. You're going, that's okay. one of my favorite looks across all of star Wars. I was like, not only is Snoke, uh, a scary. He's a freaky looking motherfucker, and I love a freaky looking motherfucker in Star Wars. It's it's amazing, but he's also got the fucking drip. Let me tell you, this fit is one of the hardest in the galaxy. We have right never now. seen it quite matched by much of anybody besides Padme. Yeah, he's he is dripping hard right now. Like even his shoes, like. They look, they look like Gucci, like, like, like 
Louis Vuitton, like high designer, like in his robe. Oh man, yeah, this is this is a good pick. You got to look at this one, like, oh man, yeah, that that's a sexy robe, man. It's a, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful fit, and that like that's that's one that's just one that I saw instantly and fell in love with the look. I I've loved the way Snoke looked ever since I saw him in color in the Last Jedi instead of the hologram in uh, the Force Awakens. Okay, this next but yeah, pick, that's that's my next one. Um, could I don't know this this one could be a little surprising. Um, I want to make sure that I get it right. I don't want to say it wrong. I know what she is, but I, the specific. Okay, I can't find it. But it's the uh, the leader of the Night Sisters. Is did they just call her uh, Mother Talzin? Okay, yeah, Mother Talzin is uh, who Talzin. I will be going with. Um, and she doesn't. That's really another change, great one. Change her outfit either, but. Um, like just her and the Night Sisters in general, you know, they all have like the same outfit, the super cool, flowy, red, spiky, you know, kind of, kind of spiky. Um, just immediately, you know, like, okay, witch, like you kind of like immediately kind of associate witch with them and just the magic flowing around them. You know, they're, they're like facial paint, whether it's paint or just like how their species, you know, is born is just, you know, just super cool and it makes them even more like mysterious looking. Um, and mother Towson and in specific, I don't know, just her dress is just the most, you know, exotic out of all of them. Um, and that's, I mean, I, I had to choose her out of, out of all the night sisters. I was oh, almost right. going to go with like Asajj Ventress. I thought uh, about that. I've thought about that hard, but looking at like their characters side by side, like, Mother Talzin just looks – she looks like a queen. and she, There's a reason she's the leader um, of, of that group because she's, she's the queen. Um, but, yeah, that's maybe a surprise pick for, uh, for some. I'm going with a lot of uh, animated. The, that, that's, that's one thing you got to give the credit to animated projects yeah. for is that you get that freedom in animation to draw them however you want. That's true. And that's, uh, that's a huge plus. Uh, I'm going, I, here I'm going another, uh, nostalgia rooted one. Uh, it's going to be a princess Leia. And how do you, how do you go with another look besides that white robe with that belt and the, and the space buns? It's, it's the most iconic Leia look. It's, it's the best and it will forever warm my heart to see Carrie Fisher in that costume. It's, it's the great it's it's my favorite it's probably my personal favorite co- costume design across the whole galaxy mm-hmm. just because of the nostalgia it brings me that's it i so that's your fourth pick yes it is okay interesting okay so i know who i'm getting and i'm glad that these two are on there they deserve to be on there um leia like leia and her uh Obviously, like her, what's it called? Like her Jabba outfit, you know, is also just oh, super yeah. iconic. Thank you um, as well for all the future Halloween costumes and the women that wear it. I, and I got I to gotta give a shout out. Me and, Emily, me and Emily this Halloween are going Han and Leia, and she's, she's rocking this outfit I've chosen here. Oh, really? At, like, she's actually... Oh, yeah, okay. she, it's already came in for. Her. I realized you said the, outfit. the white robe. Yes, the outfit you're choosing as your pick, not the outfit. Not the golden bikini. No. I'm like wow, she's gonna be. You guys are going out like trick or treating, just in that. Like no, we're hanging out in. Uh, okay. And and I'm 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 rocking the whole that's, Han thing. That's sick. That's sick. Though. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Damn. Yeah, I had to go that. I'm so jealous. What's your five here? Um. It's Luke, um, just because he deserves to be on this top five. Um, He is iconic. And the outfit that I am choosing specifically, and this is hard, um, but like me personally, whenever I think of Luke, 
I don't think of A New Hope, Luke. I think of um, Return of the Jet. Wow, Return. Return is the word that I was looking for. I knew it wasn't Revenge. Um, that false title in the poster yeah. fucks me up so much whenever I'm just trying to remember it's Return of the Jedi. Um, but I'm going with Return of the Jedi, Luke, and his black all, you know, kind of black, uh, green lightsaber. Um, I just, this is the Luke that, like, I was like, all right, Luke is cool now. Like, Luke is cool. I look up to that guy. Like, that dude is my dude. Like, he's up on the screen. Yeah. I want to be him. You know, whenever I love we were it. watching him in A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, he was still cool, but, like, he was no the all black Ooh. robes. Oh. That is Luke Skywalker. I'm 100 percent with you. It's the green. It's the green saber and the black robes for me. Whenever I think Luke Skywalker, it it always will be, uh, and that's just because of my love for Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, it was hard for me not to go with Princess Leia in the Ewok dress with the flowers in her hair. That's a great that's outfit. That's my fucking. Yeah. I fucking love that. That's that that's is... that's two for me. Uh oh, it might be like my personal favorite, but like I was going for more of the iconicism and nostalgia with the with that pick. But yeah, I I got to agree with the with that Luke fit. It's de- and if I wasn't gonna go with that Luke fit, I'd have gone with Yavin ceremony, uh, the yellow jacket and the black shirt at the end of A New Hope. Ah, uh, okay. I thought you were saying a character's name, Yavin ceremony. I'm like Yavin ceremony, and I'm like. Oh no! I call it that the because Yavin that's ceremony. the uh, on battle and Battlefront Two. He has that outfit as an option, and it's called the Avin Ceremony. Oh. Well, the that makes sense. Yeah, the ceremony is. I just didn't know that that's what the ceremony was called. Um, like oh, that, yeah. that's where she handed Luke and like I just I yeah, didn't know that had a middle. name. Yavin. Yeah. Oh, wasn't the Yavin's the planet? Yeah. Yeah. The er. It was the Battle of Yad- Yavin. Yeah, Battle... Okay, yeah, that's that's what I thought. Because, like, in the wiki, like, it's always, like, post... BBY. Yeah, B- yeah, B- yeah, it's... Oh, that's just so... So nerdy, but... Oh, man, I don't know. I love that wiki. All right, so after I make this pick, I got a question. And I want you to know I am making this pick before I ask the question, so you know I am making this pick as we have set this up so far. Okay. And you'll get that after I ask the question. But okay. uh, <laughs> I am going to go with, for this five pick, repainted Boba Fett in The Mandalorian. Ooh. To go with the repainted. it Okay, good decision, though. Good decision because everyone's reaction when he came out repainted, like, no one was like, oh, man, I missed the old suit. It was like, Damn. <laughs> Everyone was like, this is what this dude needed. We needed a revamp. <laughs> it Bad. was like, oh, it was like, this dude was already at the peak of badassery. Like, you can't get more badass than you already are. Then the dude stepped out looking like that and just was like, here I am. I've outdone myself yet again. Um, welcome to the Book of Boba. But like, I can't, that show, oh my God. It's going to be the shit. It's going to be the shit. That's a and great it, it was just it, it was just the perfect – seeing him in that suit made me go, fuck yeah, baby. We're about to get – this is Boba. Like, he's coming back. They wouldn't throw him in the new suit without being like – without putting that to use. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm trying to think of uh, like what our five look like together now. Um, yeah, so we, here's my question. I have a, I had a okay. question. Oh, oh yeah, it's true. And I wanted you to know. I wanted you to know. I made my five picks as though we were only picking five. Wow. Would, there are so many more characters I want to talk about. Would you be open to expanding this? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I, I could go to ten take, right now. Okay, I want to take ten. Yeah, I want to. I'm down to take 10. ten. Okay, so uh, surprise everybody! You just got five extra bonus rounds here. Uh, yeah, this is way like. Yeah, I wrote. Yeah, I wrote down like. There are too many people that are way too cool. It's too good. It's too good. Uh, so, 
I, I wanted you to know that that was for sure going to be my five. I wasn't going to like alter my picks just in case we gotcha. had extra. That was just going to be my five was that was repainted Boba. Uh, so we got six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 now. And I'm very excited about that. Mm-hmm. So go for pick six now. Ooh, well, my, uh, my next one was going to be BB eight. Um, just because of how creative you had, like just how creative it is to think of a spherical droid and they actually made the thing real, um, which is just insane. Yeah. Um, the orange of BB-8 is just like that dude became the iconic droid of the trilogy immediately when you saw him in the first scene. He's in the first scene. Like, like, mm-hmm. like he's a, vi- vi- a very vital role. He has the map in him. Like, you know, this droid is important. He's spherical. He's friendly. Like you get that vibe immediately from him. You know, he's a cute little friendly droid. Um, I just love the orange. Um, I don't know. It's just not a color you see a lot just used in general. Um, and I just, I don't know. I love, I love little BB eight spherical droid. So is that your, that, that's, that's your pick? That's my number here. six. Totally. I love that. I'm so glad you took a droid here because I've want, I've been thinking about opening it up over to droids a little bit. Uh, and that might just push me that way here pretty soon. Uh, it, it's tough. Yeah, BB-8. I love that BB-8 was the first one you went it's with. It's tough because, not going uh, R two. R two would be my other first droid. Um, I just think yeah. he's the only other droid that looks. I guess C three PO, but R two more like R two and BB-8 are the top two. But BB-8 just being spherical alone and just the way he just rolls around and his head just stays there is just enough alone like i don't know i just love the the design of that dude he's just so cute i love that that's a that's a that's a really great pick there uh i don't know what i don't know where to go i don't know where to go for my next one i got a few able and i got like i feel bad ahsoka's been sitting right there the whole time i've been thinking about her the whole time every pick I've been like, could I, should I go with Ahsoka here? What version of Ahsoka do I want? I can promise you by the end of these 10, I will have taken a version of Ahsoka. Uh, but for now, I don't know that I will. I actually think that I am going to go with a fully helmeted up tech our man is getting some freaking representation baby let's go tech tech you've made it to the big leagues dude you have made it man oh i'm i'm so happy i am so happy no he he was far and away throughout that series my favorite too my favorite bad batch member. And it's because of the helmet. Like oh. it's got the helmet's got to be there. Otherwise it's like, maybe I take that away, but in his little, his little yes, thing. I like, love it. Oh, everything about that, man. Oh, the yellow goggles is really what just like seals the deal for me. I just love those goggles. Are you ready for one of the hardest questions of your life? Fuck, Mary kill. Ready. Fuck, Mary kill hunter tech and echo. All right, well, I'm fucking Hunter. I can promise that. That's like, that's like an easy, easy choice. Fair, fair. Uh, Maybe this isn't the hardest question of all time. No, the the, the, the difficult choice. Between, is, the only the difficult choice between, yeah. is having to kill one of them. I don't want to kill any of them. Uh, the reality of it is, uh, you got to kill Echo and you got to marry Tech. It's so sad. It's so. And I just feel even worse for Echo now. Like, that dude always just gets the short end of the stick, man. Just always gets shafted. Always, man. Fuck. Maybe I'll pick him. <laughs> Maybe I'll pick him. Should I pick him? Echo's got a badass design. No, he do, th- and his helmet, like, goes into his head and shit. That's, like, and that's a very important part of his character design that I think is awesome. Uh, and I don't think I'm it's I'm picking him! You're taking Echo. I love it. I'm the bad batch. Seven. The bad batch love is showing out right now. Wait. Wait. 
let me take a step back. Let me think about this. Because if you're taking a member from the Bad Batch, is it Echo? I... <laughs> what? I mean, we we already know we fucking Hunter, and we already know his hair be freaking... That fucking hair, bro, and the headband, and the tattoo on half of his face. Like, even if I'm picking from the Bad Batch, still, like, Crosshair is probably still designed cooler than Echo and Wrecker. No. Echo beats out Wrecker? Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk ourselves into that for now. Yeah. Poor guy, man. I don't think I'm going to pick him. <laughs> sorry, Echo. We sorry, we're sorry we got your hopes up, man. Can you imagine be, like can you imagine if they were like actually here and like you even went, I'm picking him, I'm getting Echo. And then you're like, ah, never mind. Go sit down, Eck. Ooh. 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 Okay. 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 This is tough because now I don't know where to go. But but I know there's there is a character. That is out there. That is better. And I know that to be true. That's facts. That's facts. And let's see. Oh. Oh. What is his name? Oh, my God. Uh. Uh. Oh yes, uh, if, Watto. If, if, Watto? That's yeah, Watto. I, Watto. Watto. That is who I will be going with. Those little wings are the the hardest working wings in in the galaxy. Um, and actually known known to man or known to any species ever. Those are the hardest working wings ever. They're so small for how fat that dude is. Um, he should not be able to fly, but he do. Uh, maybe he's force sensitive. We don't know. Much to think about. Much, much to think about. That's a, um, that's a solid choice there. That's a solid choice. There. But I wanted to go with a character that was like, because I've been choosing a lot of animated. I wanted to go with the character that would just be hilarious whenever you're like scrolling through Twitter and you see just a bunch of characters and then you just see him. It's going to be funny. Yeah. It's just going to be super funny to see him because every time you see him, you immediately think, oh, yeah. You just immediately think of his voice. And then, you know, you, you feel at home and you feel comfortable um, because his voice is very soothing. Um, it is. I, I, I want him to read me bedtime stories. <laughs> oh, man. I just want him to... Tell me all the currencies across the galaxy, and they're just I don't know just the way the way that man talks it 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 hits a certain nerve but uh but I don't know just the, his species is really cool uh you know his outfit and everything is just you know he i I'm, I'm sorry, I guess I'm picking all the characters that don't change their outfits really at all. the only one that it has well, a no but that's cool that definitely like I am one hundred percent okay with that because it's opened up this opportunity for you to go more with the character design side of it and me to go with the more of the costume design side of it, which has uh which has made it a a good balance I would say mm. uh like I only have one actual person that has a specific costume and it's just Luke's for like but he only has. Like three or four. Three looks. Hoth. Uh, Hoth. And then He has the that great suit the rest of the uh, the movie. And then... Uh, oh, true. The, the, the sleeve lists while he's on Dagobah. And, uh, I guess the ceremony look. And his pilot look. Yep. Yeah. Oh, his pilot look. That's a... That's a pick right there. That might be a move coming up <laughs> soon. I just shouldn't have... I shouldn't have said that out loud. You're no, his pilot looks hard. Right? That's a classic. It's an undoubtable classic, especially at the front of the Empire Strikes Back there and at the end of That's the That's a Halloween hope. costume. That's a yeah. bucket list Halloween costume for me. I'm putting yeah, that down on my bucket dang. list. Um, but here, I think I would like to go with a version of Lando Calrissian. Now, it is a matter of what Lando 
because Lando is another guy who's just endless drip over here. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna look into some. I'm gonna look into some Lando Calrissian looks real quick. Would just, uh, get it? I'm trying to would think. You I don't, like I don't me know. To save what I would pick as Lando right now, or would you care if I would? No, go for it. Go for it. What would what would be your cho- choice? I don't want to sway. Lando? Like I, I don't want to sway. But my choice is definitely Donald Glover. Um, his yellow and black yeah, the, outfit. at the end of Solo, or or, or throughout Solo. Yeah, the, the when he had the fur coat on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. yeah. No, that was gas. That was gas. Like, and uh, that that's what I. I mean, that's whenever I think of Lando Calrissian in the drippiest he's ever been. Now that's true. That that's that true. fur matched with. I think. Well, he had he had the fur. I don't think he had the yellow one with the fur. I think it was under. I, oh, was it, it under been, the fur? It might have been because he always wears that. No, it was well, under there. It had. To I been. love the. Uh, here's the thing: is that I love Billy D's looks as Lando. That original administrator outfit that he introduces himself in, and that that light blue with like the gold interior on the cape. It's hard, and then also not to be slept on. Return of the Jedi general outfit, Lando. I love that look on him. The uh the where he looks like a military man from a galaxy far far away. It's a good look on him. The one where he gives uh, gives Han Solo the good old fashioned uh two finger salute there. That's an iconic one right there. However, that's... I think if I had to choose one Lando, it would be Lando when he was wearing Han's clothes. Because it implies it impl- it could imply because of the implication wow that is what you ended up going with that is not what i expected i completely forgot that he wore han's clothes until you just brought it up again like but what a pick though a- i had to go deep in the bag i wanted to go deep in the bag for uh Wow. For Lando here. And I like the idea that Lando and Han fucked. I think it's just I think it's just I, a dandy it's a dandy potential. They had a little bit too much to drink during they had a little bit too much spotchka during a game of Sabak, and some things were put on the line that wouldn't have otherwise been put on the line. <laughs> Lando They're, ends up in Lando they're, ends up in Han Solo's clothing the next they're day. Better, they're betting men, and they're running out of things to bet. There's only so many more things you can do. Much to think about. Much I to like consider. The pick. the pick, because of the implication, like that's that's fantastic. I will immediately lock in Pilot Luke. Um, immediately. Excellent. After Absolutely. I said it out loud, um, realizing it popped into my brain, I would have done it in place of Watto. <laughs> um, yeah, I picked Watto because I really didn't know. That was the only other name I had written down. Um, I, well, then here, how about we have a little bit of a brainstorming sesh, get get the juices <laughs> flowing here to give you a little bit more of a reference. Palpatine hasn't been brought up once. I know. Pretty iconic character design. Mace Windu, Jango Fett, uh, Noah Soka has still been taken. Uh, I mean, to get over into the animated side of things more, there are several Rebels characters, none of which have been taken. Uh, and in fact, one of which will be taken now. Uh, Hera Syndulla will be being taken as, uh, and she wears a pretty, pretty standard outfit. All of the time. I'm going to go with that that standard Hera Syndulla outfit. Just because this character design is... I, I love Twi'leks. Twi'leks are amazing, and Hera is my favorite Twi'lek. So it was just... Uh, it was I was going to take her at some point. Uh, it was just a matter of when. And Hera, uh, she's... She's the mom of the group, you know? 
and she's impossible not to have a soft spot for. She's oh, yeah. she's just amazing. An extremely lovely, lovely woman. And I always wonder how they get those hats on or their their headgear on. Yeah, you got to move it, it all the way over them. Like, is it a is it a do they put it like zip or is it a whole slip on? I don't know. How often do they take them off? You know, is it what is the per what is the point of it? What is it covering? You know, like is it is it ju- is it just fashion or is it purposeful? Um, Maybe it's like support. Maybe they're they're Leku. They 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 need connection. It's that's actually how they connect. They can disconnect them. Oh, they can actually just yeah take them off if they. Take I was off. thinking it was more like a like a bra, <laughs> like it just supports their ah, Leku, like ah, it holds yeah, them yeah, up yeah. instead totally. of uh, letting that, them yeah. go all the way down. That's totally it. That'd be yeah. my guess. Huh. But yeah, so I go Harris Sindela here for pick number, I believe that's eight. Hmm. Ooh. I will go Din Jarn. Yeah. In his full, yeah. full clean Beskar. decked out Beskar suit. That's the move. Nah, it's undoubtedly the move. I I was going to take him, but since I went with repainted Boba, I was like, I don't want to hesh over the Mandalorian look again. So uh, I'll just go with Boba. I'm glad Din Djarin was taken because I really wanted to for quite some time. Was that pick nine for you? Yes. I really can't believe Wada was on my list still. How about this? My my, I'm giving you I'm giving you a get out of jail. <laughs> I'm giving you a get out of jail card here. I'm willing to let you move both your picks up. Your Luke and uh and then pick and up, then. and then you can pick another one for your ninth one here if you want to replace Watto. I would love to take that opportunity, and I would love to replace. And I'm gonna it. I'm gonna I'm gonna inform for for us here. Uh, just because this didn't uh, come to my attention until relatively recently, uh, Watto apparently is a very anti-Semitic stereotype. Hmm. Uh, I didn't think about that. A yeah, very, that very the more I think about it, and the more yeah. it becomes more clear, and it's like, yeah. oh no, oh yeah. no, yeah. So it's like, it's like, ah. And I didn't learn. I didn't like really pay attention to that until recently. And I always feel so bad when it comes to anti-Semitism in media because it's just it's like it is one of those things that is so deeply ingrained into a lot of media that you just like hardly recognize it anymore. That's crazy. How like I just didn't even think about it until like you just said it. I had like no no idea. Would have never thought. That's crazy. No, wow, yeah, that's like, so obvious, though. How the heck? Oh, did I so not... obvious, so obvious. Man. I don't know how. And the only reason I never thought of it is because he's a fucking alien. I look at the little guy with the wings flapping, and I'm like, "Haha, look at Watto." I guess but that's then, true. Like, Whenever I'm watching it, Star think... Wars, my head is so far away from human and humanity Same. that, yeah. like, that's the point. That's the reason you watch movies is to escape reality. The part Star Wars is literally a universe far, far away. Like. Exactly. Uh, that's that's what I'm watching, you know. Like I no, yeah, I get into the same headspace. So are. like, yeah. as soon as that was like brought to my attention, I was like, "Fuck!" I forgot there are real world implications and yeah. the creations of things, and it's like, it's rough. So I was looking for every opportunity to get you to replace it. So I'm glad the opportunity came up. I'm glad that uh that I kept griping about it. Um, I guess because. I really, I really am glad that I get to replace it because after seeing Luke as his pilot and then Din Djarin following him. Yeah, like, you were like, like okay, okay, I really made a mistake here. There's a <laughs> lot of great outfits out here. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, let me take a second. Um, but, hmm, this is <coughs> interesting. I really... Like Lando's, like Donald Glover's, just 
And it would be really impressive for him to be the first character that got a repeat. Oh, wait, no, you repeated Luke. You rep- repeated Luke yourself, but Lando would be the first one on both of our teams. He's a drippy man. He's a drippy man. He's drippy. Padme deserves to be on both, honestly. You want to take a Lando how, and Padme for your last how, two? Okay, I have to take Padme here, and it's the three, or the, like, the... The clawed up. The clawed up. White Attack of the Clones outfit. Yes, yes. That That is, I definitely have to take her. That's... Honestly, put her where Watto was and keep Luke, Pilot, and Din at 8 and 9. Put Padme's... Gotcha. Yeah, Padme at 7. Padme Attack of the Clones at 7. I guess all right, don't yeah. say and, and whenever we're all wrapped up here, I'm going to need you to send me that yeah, list I'll type it out. so that I can create the graphic and such. Uh, so keep it in order and stuff for it. Uh, however, that's a great look. Uh, it's definitely another one that is obviously a first thought for Padme enthusiasts uh it's a it's it's a classic one and it's 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 not my first one i go to from attack of the clones first one i go to from attack of the clones is the meadow outfit when she's with Anakin. Oh, that yellow dress that's a great and her wedding dress frankly her wedding dress is fucking exquisite that uh, meadow outfit she looks so beautiful in that scene. Like, her makeup and her outfit, like, she just looks beautiful. Like, that, yeah, that's you know, a great the, thing. The more we talk about it, I think it might be my nine. That's a real, like, that's a real, I mean, that's, that is, I, like, when you just think of Padme. <coughs> oh, sorry. Bless you. Uh. Just awkward silence, you know, and people didn't know why, you know, for a couple seconds. It's, I don't know. I, I didn't just, either. I was taking I was, down the note that I was uh, taking Meadow Padme. I just think it's hilarious. Just sneezes in podcasts in general. It just comes up, like, in conversation, like, on, on other podcasts because a listener, like, they have no idea what's happening for that moment of silence. Until and then all of a sudden. Sneeze, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, why is there, like, why do you just stop talking? You know, it's like, yeah. Anyways. But whenever I think of just Padme, like that's an outfit that just like comes to mind whenever I just think of Padme is that outfit specific. And the therefore it is my nine. It's my nine pick. I think I was going to go with, I had a set two that I was going to go with here. So now I got to, I got to pick, but ever, you brought up attack of the clones, Padme. And I was like, how can we, how can we not have more Padme? Padme is obviously the best. We should probably have three Padmes here. Uh, so I went ahead and took a third Padme. Should I with, take uh, another Padme? I, I think you, I mean, out of respect. I mean, how many, how many things were sent to kill Padme, to kill Padme, to kill Padme? So we might as well pick another Padme. Give it some thought though. I don't want you to hastily, hastily choose a Padme if when I you can were, be given love to another character. If I were to pick another Padme, if my choice were a Padme, it would be Queen Amidala, just her like classic. The um, red one in the yeah, Phantom Menace. Yeah, yeah, white. Yeah. Um, that would be if I were, but I don't think I'm going to. Who's, uh, yeah, I think I, I will go with, uh, with Lando here. Um, and nice. it being Donald Glover, um, and it specifically, I guess I do want to get this right. Um, I don't want to say like fur coat, but then it's like not the, cause the, I think the yellow, um, have you, have you considered, I want to make sure the scene at the very end where Han wins the ship from Lando, that yellow outfit because I think you should take a peeksy because I think you'd like it. The end scene? Yeah. Uh, and I'm just trying to like of just what to type into Google. Lando. Like just the just the Ray yellow Con- shirt. Yeah, type in Lando Ray Contour. R-A-C-O-N-T E U R. I just wasn't ready whenever you started spelling. 
R A C O N T E U R. Ah. It's a good looking outfit. And I just wanted to make sure all options were considered. Uh, it's only in the movie for a couple seconds, so it's like hardly memorable, but it's a good one. Because, yeah, it doesn't matter how long it was in the movie. No, it, it does not. is one of his outfits. Yeah. And just, I didn't know, I didn't even, like, I don't, I didn't remember this at all. Um, but just looking at it, I'm looking at the uh, the Battlefront um, yeah. version That's of it That's how right I know now. it so well, yeah. Um, and it's drippy as hell. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. And I'll, I'll write that rank. How do you say that? Ra- ra- Ray Contour? Ray I'm Contour. Guessing. Ray Contour. I'll write that next to it. Uh, to, to be very specific. Yeah, that shirt is. I kind of want to buy that shirt low key. Like, it's, it's really dope. Like, I see it like I see it like right now for uh thirty dollars and I'm really having a hard time resisting. But um yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. That's gonna be my my pick. Alright. So for this last pick, I took Meadow Pad May at nine. And I had a nine and ten set up, but now I gotta choose one of them. So I got. I, I already said that I would take an Ahsoka by the end of this. You did say that. And I, I, if I'm gonna take an Ahsoka, I think I would want uh, Ahsoka in the uh, in the white robe at the end of Rebels. That's that's a good Ahsoka. However. The person who was going to be my 10 while Ahsoka was going to be my 9 is Fennec Shand. Deserved. Wait, wait. Love... You wait, wait. This is... This is my 10. This is it. So Ahsoka is out. Fennec Shand is in. I don't know. I'm oh, deciding. You don't... Oh, okay, okay. I thought you just... Okay. You're deciding between those two. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. I thought I you deciding. were... You, okay, okay, I got I you. don't know. Okay. I want your input. Wow. If possible. If you are willing to give it. Well, I'm thinking. Because it's not an easy it's not. decision. Like, I'm looking at White Robe Ahsoka, Ahsoka right now. Let me, let me just pull up Phoenix. I just got to look at them side by side. Because that, that's what – that's – at the end of the day, that's what's going to be on Twitter – that's what people are gonna be looking at these costumes, you know. Like it's true. We're picking them for a reason. Would you have a a specific Phoenix Shand or just? I guess she really doesn't change. Like full, like no, nah, yeah, it's, down, it's overall like, the same outfit. Just like her With assassin helmet, outfit, yeah. Who? As a costume. The as Fennec a, Shand as, a cool. as a costume, Phoenix Shand wins. As a character, Ahsoka wins. Yeah, the character design, it's Ahsoka. That's the not close. costume think, design, yeah. it's Fennec Shand. That's the problem I'm having here. And that's the thing, is that Ahsoka has the character plus the white robe costume. So, like... And it's Ahsoka. So you get you get both a, a kick-ass costume plus Ahsoka's character. Ahsoka, yeah. So... Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna go white robe Ahsoka. It's the way it was. She was gonna be my honorable nine. Mention, and it was gonna be my ten. Uh, yeah. Mention. If you you got an honorable mention, you want to throw out then, since I got Phoenix Shan as an Ani. Job of the Hut. I thought it. I thought it on multiple occasions. Also, shout out, shout out, three PO. Shout yeah. Wow, that was cool. 3PO um, was always one I was thinking of the entire time, too. Uh, I mean, shit. Kylo. Yep, of course. One that I, one that I was thinking Palpatine. of. There, Palpatine there are a is couple, kind of bland at the end of the day, actually, like, whenever you think about just it. Just like, the robe and wrinkly-ass yeah. face. I mean, his, uh, his uh, Senate costume, like, his outfit is actually kind of drippy. Um, sometimes, like, he, he has some, some cool outfits, but 
I guess kind of honorable mention. I just like the guy. Um, I just like the guy. Nah, yeah. Not what he stands for and all, but. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, the other stuff. <laughs> uh, other other honorable mentions, Obi-Wan Kenobi Clone Wars. Hmm. Oh, and the, the cool geometric beard that he has. Oh, yeah. God, it's just, yeah, that's that's a good one. With the uh, the Clone Wars armor, you know, the white shoulder pads and stuff like that. I love that. Uh, Savage Opress. Mm. Uh, Bo-Katan. Mm. Huge. Uh, mm. Hunter, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ray has some really good looks. Her hair. Uh, I like her hair is I, iconic. Her hair is iconic. Uh, and then there's an outfit. Like, they don't really have like incredible costume, like the costume design's cool and all, but they don't have anything that really pops out in the sequel trilogy for me. Uh, amongst our like main trilogy, you know, with like Finn, Poe and Ray. However, Poe's got this outfit in the rise of Skywalker. That's real simple. It's just a white shirt and brown pants while they're on that, uh, Pisana, I think is what it's called where the giant life celebrations happening. Mm. It's a, it's a good looking outfit and Oscar Isaac's a good looking man. So I'm always going to be looking, but, uh, and then and then Finn's got that good the the dope resistance leader outfit and the rise of Skywalker with his hair just looking fine as hell, which I love. But yeah, I don't know about I don't know about many others. A Grievous, don't know how Grievous didn't come up a single time. But oh Grievous. my god! Wow, that's yeah. You would have taken Grievous for sure. Yeah, he's a he's a good one. Uh, def yeah, he's definitely an honorable mention there. Uh, hmm. I, I wow, Grogu or Yoda didn't make it on here. Um, which is interesting. We you could tell though we were we were both trying to get creative more so yeah. than just picking the classic characters. Uh, just because. I mean, it was it's way more fun that way, you know, like for sure. And this list, it just allowed for that to happen, too. This is way more of an open-ended, way more vague, way more, like, based on personality and not just, yeah. like, Star Wars fact that's just accepted. No, yeah, it's just opinion. Um, it's complete and utter opinion. Um, but... Sorry, I'm just trying to think and type at the same time, but... Moff Gideon. Ooh, definitely Moff Gideon. The blue fish dude, whatever his name is, man. Yeah, yeah. that was just a cool guy. Um, I mean, Grief Karga is looking kind of drippy. I fucks with Grief Karga's look. Uh, IG IG eleven and eighty eight, those are dope. Um, Chewbacca, don't know how Chewbacca didn't oh come up a single my God, time. No, Chewie, Han. Han's got some looks, but you know Han always maintains a relative normalcy. You know, uh, his outfit's not too incredibly out there, but it's still like I took a Han outfit. It was just on Lando. Qui Gon, but the behind the scenes picture where he has like the sunglasses and he looks yeah. all baller. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Qui Gon's pretty bland. He's just a Jedi, really. See, that's where that's there. where yeah. that's where the Jedi go wrong with yeah. Anakin and Obi Wan and Mace and uh, Anakin's got something to him, I guess. But it's just his dark and the scar, you know. I guess. Yeah, I mean, like yellow eyes and scar with robot hand, maybe. Uh, uh what if what, like right after Chop when he's burning up that yeah. Anakin? Or that oh general grievous yeah. after he's been shot in his heart <laughs> and he's shooting flames out of his eyes yeah yeah yes that's an outfit i'd consider it an outfit be really funny you'd have to have that that exact screenshot up there um if that yeah i would um Ooh, orson krennic orson the white outfit in rogue one my oh, God, yeah, 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 yeah. An actual imperial person that kind of was dripping out, you know, that cape too. Cape, you know, the long cape kind of worked on him, you know. I, that, yeah, I'll give it to him. 
freaking Thrawn. Thrawn is so Thrawn. cool. Yeah, Thrawn's a pretty Damn. iconic one. Rebels and there's has there's so some from really like cool there's freaks. some from like comic books I was considering like uh there's this design for Darth Vader in the Darth Vader co- comics that's uh for Ochi of Bastoon who they find dead in The Rise of Skywalker who killed Rey's parents uh was the Sith acolyte. Uh he's like Darth Vader's little companion for a while in the Vader comic run and uh and he's got a full armor, a uh, full gear of armor, and uh, a, a really cool helmet. Should've, it reminds me a little bit of Tech mixed with like a Mandalorian. I should have picked the fully decked out uh, Sith freaking. What's it called? Sith. Holocron? Holocron. Yeah, wow. Sith I was like, I don't know, I don't know. Should have gone with that. Should have gone with that as a as a costume pick for a fuck. Throw in a yeah, a Lego. Yeah, Lego pick. God, that'd have been outstanding. Oh, and the Lego Star Wars special introduced uh, Ren on screen for the first time, who was just a comics character from the Rise of Kylo Ren. Uh, was with a cool uh, oh yeah, and I want I want like if you if we want those Knights of Ren to have any weight. They got to get introduced in like the book of Boba. Mm. It would be the perfect. It would be perfect if they introduced them in the book of Boba. Yeah, it's like I I was thinking like, wait, are we gonna see Grogu like training here in this jet like in, in this temple like right now? Like, is Grogu about to pop up like in the background? Like, like, and they're just gonna drop like a major, you know, like, you know, would that matter? Like, if we did see Grogu, would that would that be their way of saying like, see, Lego Star Wars canon is different than our canon. Yeah. So it's it's weird, but like, no, it wouldn't have any bearing on ours. But like, if they did that, that would kind of be like a little like. Well, we already know it was happening. It's already been confirmed. Yeah. But like, do we? Is it is yeah, it confirmed Astoka, that he's Astoka at Luke's was temple? Like he was at the temple. He trained at the temple. Oh, that's right. How did that do get out, man? That's the only thing we don't know. How did that do get out? Both times he escaped Anakin and Kylo. Maybe he beat him and embarrassed him so bad they both turned into little wussies for the rest of their lives. Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> much, much to think about. Um, we imagine that's how it turns out to be. We see Grogu, and he he's just this little, you know, and Anakin's in his murderous rage, just oh, one last one, you know, just mur- and just like gets the shit beat out of him by this, like just by Grogu, and he Anakin just runs off like it didn't happen. Like I can't tell Palpatine, like <laughs> kill me, like I there's no way I could tell him that this happened on my first like you know Sith like kind of mission, like no way, and then Kylo like. Yeah, like, the Knights of Ren are right there watching me, like, destroy this temple, and, like, this little green dude just kicked the shit out of me, and now I have all these scars, so I'm just gonna put this helmet on, and I'm Kylo Ren now. I'm the weak Kylo. You know, like, maybe that's how he got his name. Kylo. Grogu was the one who embarrassed him. Dude. I'm right about Ultron and this. I'm, I'm, I know it to be true. You're right. And if you want more on, uh, on, uh, Marvel, cause we talked a whole bunch of Spider-Man, whole bunch of what if, over on patreon.com slash Coro Bloom, where you'll find a whole hour long introduction on the front of this episode and over 18 hours of exclusive content now, uh, over there, along with a bunch of art that I've been creating over the past few months that only a few people have seen. You're only going to get that content and see those, see that artwork if you are over there for the small price of $3 a month. And, uh, it, it, it's huge for me to keep the podcast going and, uh, I've made, I made like, I haven't made much over the last few months, but I made 60 bucks from it, which is 60 bucks I wouldn't have had otherwise, you know? Uh, right. and that's, that's about three months of running the pod and about three months of Patreon. So it's, it's worked out pretty well. Uh, right. however, this was the 136th episode of the Penny Bloom podcast. Twas I, Colton Robertson, and I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, buddy. Oh, thank you for having me. You know, I love I love to be out here doing this, uh, and uh, will love to join back anytime.
anytime, maybe even next week. You know what? Maybe even next week. Maybe even. Uh, but yeah, like I said, go sign up over at patreon.com slash Bloom. And uh, follow over on Twitter at Penny Bloom Pod, on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast. Uh, go vote on the Twitter poll, which will be up about uh, whose team has the best character slash costume design. Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to that poll. It'll be up for a week, starting. Uh, I'll probably put this episode out on Wednesday. I'll say Wednesday. Fuck it. Yeah, it'll be it'll be tomorrow, I guess. Uh, so it'll be up. And uh, I'm looking very much, very much forward to that. Uh, leave a rate and review on Apple Podcasts. Share the podcast with a friend. And uh, lastly, peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves.